Let's begin with a word of prayer and we'll move right along into today's lesson. We thank you, Lord, for this time we have to learn and grow. We seek to do the best we can and add to what we know. We love you, God, with all our hearts and to others' love we show. Pleasing you is our goal, not to our lesson we should go. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, this is Lita here with Heroes Brain Homeschool Academy. Welcome to another social studies class. It's really good to have you here. We are presently in Unit 2. We've been talking about American history. We've talked about lots of events. You've had a chance so far to cover over 200 years of, um, of content and of knowledge and of history, really, and your history, potentially, especially if you're from the United States of America or if you are um, perhaps a first generation or second generation. Um, American, then you have an opportunity and you've had, a, and had a great opportunity to learn about our historical events and, and occurrences, whether you, whichever side you're on, whether you were on the side of the, um, the early Europeans, early settlers, or whether you were a descendant of a slave, or whether you're a descendant of a Native American, or perhaps you're a Spaniard, or perhaps you're a migrant, your parents are those who migrated here in the early 1800s and even in the 1900s. No matter where you fit in, you've had a chance to hear your story, or at least the story of your ancestors, told over the course of the last weeks. We're talking in this particular lesson in our timeline from the uh, era we call the Progressive Era until the New Era that covers 1900 to 1929. This is the time that uh, where there's the most progression. This is the era where there is the um, probably one of the greatest progressive areas. And let me give you some examples. There were lots of reform. Remember, reform just means change. Lots of uh, businesses expanded. Um, lots of immigration was a, were able to come in. A lot of immigration increasing. Um, there was a lot of, we want equality, you know, a lot of equality speaks, especially among women. Uh, women were some of the most uh, vibrant <laughs> at this time. Uh, an example of that is Susan B. Anthony. Susan B. Anthony is the woman who basically just started defying uh, her, the law of the land. The law of the land said women can't vote. She said, I'm going to vote. She literally went to a registration office and commanded a ballot, I'm going to vote. And she ended up, you know, being arrested because of it. But that was the kind of thing going on, social inequality, people were standing up against it. Remember, we have a democratic, or we have a democracy as a government. And what that means is that um, people believe in equality, they believe everyone should be treated equally. And that's because according to the constitution, there are promises equality. And according to the Emancipation Proclamation, their promises equality and so people want to cash in on that since that's the kind of nation we live in um anthony was a person who spoke up in against social injustice uh women gender role inequalities and things of that nature <clears throat> now are all of these things good some of it is good some of it is not the thing is no matter who is maybe protesting no matter who may be shouting against the government firstly the bible does teach us that we are not to be that way the bible teaches very clearly he doesn't want um insurrectionists and people who are violently opposing the government even uh, a lot of protesting god doesn't want people who are always opposed to their leadership he has what we call um divine order he has given people the right to lead, to guide, and to um, be submitted to. He has all of that in place. And it's our job as citizens to respect those roles and to try and negotiate change as much as we can within the rights that God has given us. But being you know, violently opposed and outspoken, and we want to be mindful of these things. Um, I know in the generation we live in, a lot of times children are being taught to stand up and be a, you know, be an advocate of what you believe and shout it from the rooftops and be loud and proud. That is not what the Bible teaches. Okay, so with that being said, did women deserve and desire to have equality? Uh, yes. Is all of that equality good? It depends, right? It depends on what it is they want to be equal to. What is it that, what are, you know, are your desires 
and um, you know what is whatever whatever it is that they're desiring to change doesn't equal up with what God wants for you. And so these are the things that people should think about before they side with feminist views. I'm gonna find out what role did God give you? Never mind the government. Never mind all these things. What role did God give you? And so keep these things in mind as we're talking about socialism or as we're talking about feminism or as we're talking about democracy or as we're talking about slavery or if we're talking about um, whatever it is we're talking about, think about God's perspective at all times. And you'll know God's perspective if you read the Bible. It'll guide you even as I'm speaking. So they were demanding change. We want change. They were holding up signs and protesting on the streets and just going on and on and on. At the same time, a lady by the name of Amelia, Amelia Earhart, was uh, known as the very first woman to fly alone across the Atlantic Ocean. And the Atlantic Ocean is very massive, as you know. We've been talking a lot about the Atlantic, o the Atlantic Ocean because we've been trying to get us from England to North America over the last few weeks. So this whole ocean, she traveled from North America across the Atlantic Ocean. And I believe she landed in Spain, but I can't recall. In any situation, she was the very first lady to do that alone in an airplane by herself. Now, uh, the reason that's important is because we do want women and ladies to feel empowered to do things and to break records that no one else has broken. Uh, President Theodore Roosevelt, he was known in his time to be a uh, um, kind of a conservative person. He had expanded the national parks and forest conservation systems. He was the kind of president that said, hey, we're wasting a lot. We need to stop wasting. And so a lot of people loved him because he was kind of stepped in and started to try and save and, and even conserve and even recycle where other people may not have cared, other presidents before him or prior to him um, or even after him may not have cared so much. This is also the time frame where we have the World War One. World War One was the really great war that occurred between um, um, Germany and Austria was on one side, and a lot of other uh, nations as well. And they were against forces like Britain, France, and the United States of America eventually joined. So you have these two uh, um, sides and they're at war and unfortunately i mean tens of thousands hundreds of thousands potentially millions of people died all over as a consequence of the war what did they fight over they fought because a leader of austria an austrian leader was assassinated he was assassinated then here comes the speculations and next thing you know there's a full-fledged war and so that's basically what occurred there um, however, uh, I like to bring in someone who brings a smile to my face. His name is George Washington Carver. He was an African American man or a black man who invented lots of products using peanuts, soy, and sweet potatoes. He liked to invent different products and he had a lot of fun. He even had a really close relationship with the car producer, Henry Ford, and he even had a chance to visit the president at the time. He was just a, a very um, one of a kind person who liked to make do with what he had. I heard he even felt that wheat were edible for consumption on a daily basis and said, hey, no one at any time in the whole world should ever go hungry if they have access to wheat. All you need to do is saute it and throw it in a sandwich and you've got a meal. So he was a very out of the box thinker and uh, someone we're very proud of even to this day. Please take time to complete or at least to review and reread the content here on the worksheet. That's all I have for you today, boys and girls. Thank you so much for joining me in today's lesson. Until next time, remember, Jesus loves you as do we. God bless. I'll be your hero's body And as you study With heroes born I will be your friend So don't you worry